you please stand? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that all who believe in Him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. You're most welcome to what was the College Chapel here in Dominican, but very appropriately now the Year 14 Study Centre, as many of our Year 14s have joined us for this special Mass during the month of November for all those who have died during the past year. As well as our Year 14s and members of staff, I want to welcome in a very special way Donna, that's the mother of Lisa Doherty, one of our students who left the school just last June and died just over a month ago very suddenly. Many of us still feel the loss of Lisa today. We're also delighted to welcome Frances, who is the daughter of Mr. Brian Rooney, who was a teacher here for many, many years, and a esteemed colleague, friend, and example to many generations of Dominican students. Frances, you're most welcome. The last month of the church's year in November is dedicated to prayer for the deceased. And so it's appropriate that we come together to remember all those who have died during the last year and to commend all those we love to the mercy and to the love of God. As well as praying for mercy for those who have gone before us, we ask for that gift for ourselves as we journey through life, as we call to mind our sins and ask God to forgive us and to grant us peace and strength for the future. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, life of all that is mortal and joy of the saints, we humbly pray to you for your servants, our November deceased, that freed from the bonds of mortality, they may possess your kingdom in everlasting glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you please to be seated. I'd like to invite Mia now to come forward and to lead us in our first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God, in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Anyone who believes in me will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Then fixing his eyes on his disciples, he said, How blessed are you who are poor. The kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now. You shall have your fill. Blessed are you who are weeping now. You shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce your name as criminal on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice when that day comes and dance for joy. Look, your reward will be great in heaven. This was the way their ancestors treated the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Light of the World is the title of a famous painting by William Holman Hunt, an English artist who lived in the 19th century. This particular work of art is over 150 years old, and the original can be found in Kebley College in Oxford. Later, just before he died, Holman completed a life-size version, which to this day hangs in St. Paul's Cathedral in London. The picture itself shows the figure of Jesus standing at a door in the woods at the close of the day. Dressed in a priestly robe, he wears a crown of thorns, and his wounds are also clearly visible, marking him out as our crucified Saviour. Our Lord's head is surrounded by a halo, setting him apart from all others as the Holy One of God. Hunt painted Jesus' expression as one of great patience. He does not show anger or fatigue, but waits quietly for the door to be opened. The eyes seem to look directly at you wherever you stand, because they are eyes full of love. All the light in the painting comes from the lantern held in Jesus' left hand. This serves to explain the painting's title, Jesus declared, I am the light of the world. As the light of the world, Jesus gives life, just as the sun gives life to the natural world. He also leads his followers through the dark and difficult times of their lives, providing guidance and hope. When Holman Hunt completed his painting, he invited his friends round for the unveiling. Their first impressions were very positive, but on closer inspection, they noticed that something was missing. Eventually, one of them plucked up the courage and pointed out that there was no handle on the door. Hunt then smiled, not in embarrassment, but in wisdom. He said, oh, that, that's not a mistake, because this painting is a parable and an invitation. The door represents the door of our lives. There's only one handle on the inside. It can only be opened from the inside. Jesus knocks on the door of our lives and waits patiently for us to open it. But the choice 
is ours. A person who hears Jesus' message needs to accept it and open their heart and allow him into their lives. The words from the book of Revelation written beneath the picture explain its inspiration. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. As we gather to offer this Mass for our November deceased, we do so in the presence of Jesus, who is for all of us our guiding light, the light of the world. Often at the time of death, symbols are important. And one significant symbol at the time of death is the Paschal candle, which is lit for the first time each liturgical year at the Easter Vigil, when the church celebrates Christ's resurrection and his victory over sin and death. In the funeral liturgy, the Paschal candle is placed beside the coffin. Because at every baptism, a candle is lit from the Paschal candle and entrusted to the family of the baptized. It represents eternal life promised by Jesus to his followers. So even at the end of this earthly life, we believe that those who follow Christ as the light of the world will live with God in the eternal light of his love. And that is our hope. And it's very real. It's the same hope expressed in our first reading today, which talks about heaven as a wonderful feast where there is abundant food and drink, a place where every tear is wiped away. And that ties into a line from our gospel. It says, Blessed are you who are weeping now. You shall laugh. Those words are a reference to that future life which we call heaven, and a reminder that mourning is not a permanent reality, although it can be so, so difficult to adjust to living without those we love. But I deliberately use the present tense here, those we love, because I remember a priest once telling me that death changes everything except love. When our loved ones die, we still love them, and they still love us. The challenge of mourning and letting go is to learn to love them in a different way. But true love never dies. The American author Thornton Wilder puts it like this. He writes, some of us will live and love for a while and be forgotten, but the love will have been enough. There is a land of the living and a land of the dead, and the bridge is love, the only meaning, the only survival. In the light of Holman Hunt's famous painting, we entrust all our dead to Jesus, the light of the world. Death is Christ's time to open the door for us and to welcome us home, to welcome all those who have died into the happiness of heaven. Now that they have completed their baptism, they are at one with God forever. In our sadness, we turn to God. In the darkness of grief, we ask Jesus, the light of the world, to show us the way. And I'd like to leave you with words from a children's song, words that might encourage all of us to open the door of our heart to Jesus, who waits with his light and his love. Let your light shine for all the world to see, the brightness of your life within, the peace that sets you free. Let your light shine to fill your nights and days. Others will see the deeds you do and give your Father praise. For all who have gone before us, may eternal light shine upon them. And may they rest in peace. Amen.
So I invite you to please stand for our prayer of the faithful. I'd like to invite Lewis and Orla and Martina and Liam to come forward and to lead us in our prayers. God our Father, we bring our prayers to you with confidence and trust this day. We remember those who have died, Dominican sisters, staff, students, family members, and friends. We remember those who have passed away since this time last year. Lisa Dougherty, Gillian Dent, Brian Rooney, Mita Gale, Francis Duffin, Ben Cobain, Nikki Shirley, Eileen Mullen, and Thelma Kennedy. May those we have lost remain close in our hearts and can yet continue to be a source of strength and inspiration. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we grieve, we, we know that this very time, others are grieving great losses too. Teach us to be sensitive to the sufferings and pains of others. Help us to take strength from the community of our brothers and sisters in the faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before the Lord all the areas of darkness in our world. We pray for those who are suffering from the effects of war, terrorism, and natural disasters. Give us generous and open hearts to be a light to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We think of those in our school community and the wider Dominican family who are sick or worried at this time. Grant them healing and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We just take a moment in silence now to pray for all those who have died, our loved ones, family members, friends, pupils of this college, esteemed members of staff and Dominican sisters. Lord, as they live in our hearts for a moment, may they live in your presence forever. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, in faith we bring our prayers today because we trust you and entrust all those who have died to your eternal care. And we make all our prayers through Christ our risen Lord, who lives forever and ever. Amen. I invite you please now to be seated as we continue with the offertory of our Mass.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of you. Praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for our departed servants, our November deceased, and for all who sleep in Christ, that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice, they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dominic, St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Noel our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember our November deceased, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please stand. We pray our family prayer, praying in union with all those who have gone before us and the communion of saints, and trusting those who have died to the care of our loving Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We take a moment to pray for peace, that those who have gone before us may rest in peace, that those who mourn today may experience that peace which the world cannot give. And in a world torn by war and violence, we pray that all God's people may know the gift of his peace. So we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please be seated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. Just with regard to distribution of Holy Communion, if you just say we are, and when I come round, if you'd just like to stand and receive communion on the palm of your hand, according to current regulations. If for whatever reason you prefer not to receive communion, you're most welcome to receive a blessing. If you just make a simple gesture, I'd be privileged to give you a blessing at this communion time. And thank you in advance for your cooperation and respect. with peace and joy. Amen. I'd like to invite Judy to lead us in our post-communion reflection. What is dying? I am standing on the seashore. A ship sails to the morning breeze and starts for the ocean. She is an object and I stand watching her till at last she fades from the horizon and someone at my side says, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in the masts, hull and spars as she was when I saw her and just as able to bear her load of living fright to its destination. The diminished size and total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at that moment when someone at my side says, she is gone, there are others who are watching her coming and other voices take up a glad shout, there she comes, and that is dying. Eternal rest grant on to Lisa, Gillian, Brian, Mita, Francis, Ben, Nikki, Eileen, and Thelma, and all our deceased. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. As we participate in the divine mysteries, we pray, Almighty God, that they may advance our salvation 
and bring pardon to the souls of your servants, our November deceased, for whom we implore your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, a few brief words of thanks. Thanks to Miss Ronan, our school principal, for allowing this very special uh, celebration to take place. I want to thank in a very special way Miss Rainey from the RE department, who did much of the preparation for today. Thank our readers, those who led us in our prayers and a beautiful uh, post communion reflection. To thank you, all of you, for the gift of your presence, especially to Donna and your family, and to Francis for being here. The few words I just want to leave you with are from our preface for today's Mass. For the faithfully parted, we prayed, life is changed, not ended. That is the hope of resurrection, and that hope of life everlasting, the promise of Christ, the light of the world. May that bring consolation and encouragement to all of us as we journey through the dark days into the eternal light of God's love. So I invite you to please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And the response to each part of our special blessing today is Amen. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead, a place of light and peace. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. I'm conscious that many will be viewing this Mass in just a few days' time. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of all our school community to thank Mark Connolly for his expertise, professionalism, enabling this celebration to be shared by so many more people over the coming days. Thank you and God bless.